Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We want to start off with this uh, late breaking news this morning on the southwest side. Police are investigating a stabbing in the 5500 block of Little Creek Drive. Our Katrina Weber is live on the scene and Katrina, what can you tell us so far? Well, good morning, Stephanie. Uh, not a whole lot. Police uh, here at the scene are offering too many details. They told us that we have to wait for a public information officer. What I do know from them is that there has been a stabbing and they say it's related to family violence. It happened right here uh, about halfway down the block. That's where police have been working. They were called here just before 8 o'clock this morning uh, for the stabbing, and uh, they say that it is a woman who was stabbed. Now, we got here pretty quickly. We did not see any ambulances leave this area, but police still are focusing uh, on that house. Uh, they, again, told us that detectives, homicide detectives, as well as the public information officer are on their way here to the scene, uh, and we will get more information at that point. They have had Eagle flying over the helicopter looking for a car somehow tied to this incident. It may be, according to what we were told, maybe a white Camaro with a black stripe down the center. Uh, so they are looking for that car that is somehow related to the situation. Again, uh, no word on the condition of the woman. Police say that we have to wait and talk to the public information officers. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, Case at 12 News. Hey, Katrina. And for now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. The big cleanup is underway in Texas this morning. The state is now recruiting plumbers after an increase in busted pipes and nearly 10 million Texans are still without safe drinking water. Congressional Democrats return to Washington are directing their full attention towards President Joe Biden's agenda, including his $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill. The bill includes direct payments to millions of Americans, small businesses and schools. Today, President Joe Biden will hold a moment of silence and light a candle for the half million Americans who have died of COVID-19. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says the president wants to use his, quote, own voice and platform to take a moment to remember the people whose lives had been lost, end quote. Senate hearings will begin today on Judge Merrick Garland, who is President Joe Biden's nominee for U.S. Attorney General. If Garland's confirmed, he will oversee the U.S. Justice Department during a number of high-profile cases, including the fallout from the Capitol riots and a tax investigation into the president's son, Hunter. Boeing is recommending all of its 777 airplanes stop flying for now. The airplanes use engines like the one that caught fire in flight over Colorado on Saturday. The aircraft manufacturer believes the grounding is necessary until the investigation is complete. Officials in Israel anticipating months, maybe even years of costly cleanup after a ship spilled oil along much of its Mediterranean shoreline. An investigation is underway to locate the ship. Environmental groups are calling it a major disaster. The U.S. Coast Guard was called to rescue several people from Lake Erie in Ohio this weekend. In all, seven adults and two children were rescued after they became stranded on the ice. A website wants to pay you for staying at a five-star luxury resort. Sleepstandards.com is looking for someone to stay five nights in different environments and write a report each night. The deadline to apply is March 31st. Today is National Margarita Day. Even though this year it lands on a Monday, many area restaurants will still be celebrating with some special discounts. And that's today's 9 at 9. And after last week, I have a motion on the table to make every day this week National Margarita Day. <laughs> I think a lot of people will agree with that. All you, in Mark. favor say aye. I opposed. Wow, that was pretty the, loud. The eyes have it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some of the oldest DNA ever sequenced has been discovered and researched, and the time frame is just mind boggling. Yeah, this is actually coming from a tooth from a mammoth, and it's the first time that the DNA has been recovered from animal remains more than a million years old. So previously, the most ancient DNA sample was from a horse that lived between 560,000 and 780,000 years ago. The information recovered from this giant of the Ice Age really reveals how woolly mammoths evolved and adapted life in a cold climate. And an international team of researchers was able to isolate DNA from molars from three separate mammoths collected from the Siberian permafrost in the 1970s. They dated the teeth using geological data and by analyzing the DNA. Mm -hmm. The research was published in the journal Nature on Wednesday. And now here is the grand total. How old was it? 
Wow. So the oldest mammoth tooth dated back to between 1.2 million and 1.65 million years ago. Wow. Yeah, just a little bit ago. <laughs> the younger estimates comes from a method known as, what is that, biostratigraphy? Bio where scientists assess the presence of small rodents found in the layers of sediment. Species that only existed during certain time periods. I still hmm. can't. I bar barely can work the calculator on my iPhone, so this stuff's still kind of just yeah, that... way above my pay grade and my brain ability <laughs> to process. It's just a very long time ago. We can we can stick with that one. One point six five million years ago. Years ago, wow. yeah. Wow. Oof. Back when before last week's permafrost here. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm glad we're over that. I was ready for that. It's weird seeing you guys in this setting. I feel like it should be snowy outside. I know. <laughs> it's sunny. The live cam showing a beautiful shot there out over the city of San Antonio. What a rebound over the weekend. Beautiful weather yesterday. We're going to see another round today. Despite the fact the front came through this morning, it's not going to really cool us down all that much. And in fact, we were in the 40s last half hour or last hour, I should say. Already jumping into the 50s now. 57 northeasterly winds at about six miles per hour, and there is some drier air trying to work in. We should be up around 72 a little bit later this afternoon with uh, plenty of sun out there uh, to go around. There's a look at the state: 37 in Lubbock, 37 in Abilene, 47 in Waco. So we are out of the deep freeze. And uh, looking at uh, the satellite picture, there still are some clouds down to our south, but those will continue to move off to the south. So that's why we think we'll have clear skies today. 72, again, your high temperature with late northeasterly winds. We do have some rain chances to talk about a couple more cold fronts. Nothing like last week, but a little bit cooler nonetheless. We'll have much more on that seven-day forecast here in just a bit, guys. All right, nothing like last week. That sounds great, Justin. Uh, taking a look out at with TransGuide, uh, things looking a lot better, but there seems to be something going on there uh, on Culebra Road, but uh, no icy conditions. Things are back to normal, so we're happy to see that. Yeah, that was upper level of 10 at Culebra. Be advised. Top stories we're following for you today. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting that sent one man to the hospital late last night. It happened around 10 p.m. at a home in the 7600 block of Stagecoach Lane. That's near Highway 90 and Loop 410. So police tell us the man was shot at another location but went to his brother's house to call for help. The man was taken to University Hospital where he is expected to recover. Right now, officers say there is no suspect information. Police are still investigating a possible motive. Police are also investigating an accident that sent five people to the hospital overnight. Yeah, officers tell us alcohol may have played a factor in this one. It happened around 2.30 this morning at the intersection of Calabria and Les Harrison. Police tell us a driver turned at the intersection and hit an ambulance that was taking a patient to the hospital. Police say the ambulance ran over the median and hit a wrought iron fence. Officers tell us both EMS workers and their patient were taken to a hospital, but no one suffered serious injuries. Well, COVID-19 vaccination distributions will begin again this morning here in San Antonio. All were rescheduled due to last week's winter storms. If your appointment was scheduled for February 18th at the Alamo Dome, you will get your vaccine today. All well-met appointments were pushed back one week, so if you're originally scheduled to get one Monday, February 15th, you will now be vaccinated today. You can find all this information along with the University Health's schedule on our website at ksat.com. Most school districts have reopened today, both virtually and in person. However, all IDEA San Antonio classes, both virtual and in person, are canceled today. Comfort ISD also canceled classes for students today and will have online only instruction for the rest of this week. All KIPP Texas schools are closed today and will have virtual instruction tomorrow and Wednesday. And Edgewood ISD, Stratford Elementary and Early Childhood Center, as well as Roosevelt Elementary will only offer remote learning today for building repairs. So you can find more information on those school closures on our website at kset.com. Any morning headlines, hard to believe we're not leading our headlines with snow or ice. How about fences and touching portraits? A man had to save a dog from an icy pool and a family of all kinds. Our David Sears is here to explain. Hey, good morning, David. David Sears survives wow. the big freeze up in Comal yeah. County. Ooh, what Glad a to week, have you huh? back. <laughs> Rough, man, but here we are. Welcome so. back. Thanks. I'm glad to actually be out of the house. Yes, I'm sure you are. Be down the road. It was kind of fun driving in today. Usually it's not. Today it was. But anyway. All right, let's start with this. Former President Donald Trump has been out of office for a little over a month, but the investigations continue. The Manhattan District Attorney is looking for documents from the New York City Tax Commission, so they have sent them a subpoena. 
Remember, former Trump attorney Michael Cohen has alleged that the Trump organization inflated value of assets to secure loans. And then when it came time to pay taxes, the organization lowered the value of those assets. The Manhattan DA not commented on the latest subpoena yet and no comment from the Trump organization on this latest move. However, in the past, they have denied doing anything wrong. Capitol Police want that razor wire that is surrounding the Capitol to stay all summer. The extra fencing was put up in place after those riots back in January. There have been no specific threats and many lawmakers want the fence gone because they're afraid the longer it stays, the greater the chance it becomes permanent. A police officer has left a lasting impression on a family in more ways than one for his thoughtfulness and his talent. This story stretches across the country. Brianna Ibarra was trying to get out of a stolen SUV when she was dragged to her death. The 13 year old story reached across the country from Kansas all the way to Philadelphia. Johnny Castro is a member of the Philadelphia Police Department. He is their sketch artist during the day and then at night he does portraits of fallen heroes. He's done hundreds of them. Brianna's story touched him to the point that he wanted to give her family a portrait. Somebody actually shared a link for a news report out there, and I had read it. And um, I mean, it was just heartbreaking to read, but um, I felt compelled to do her portrait. I have a, a daughter the same age as Brianna, so uh, kind of really hit home uh, just reading about what happened. It's very special. Um, anytime I'm able to complete one of these portraits, it's, uh, you know, it's meaningful. But not only that, but just making sure that, you know, they, they end up in the hands of the family um, means a lot to me, but I know it means a lot to them as well. Yeah, Johnny has heard from the family who said they were deeply touched. The guy who stole the vehicle has been charged with murder. Another rescue taking place. All right, there is some ice and snow in this one. This is in South Lake, this northwest of Dallas. You can see a little pup wandering out onto the frozen pool, and then all of a sudden, oh, no, the ice gives way. Zoya goes in. It's a desperate situation. The family was at a neighbor since they had a busted pipe in their home, but the neighbor's dog started barking to warn the Sherma family. Rajat came running, and then he ended up going in. What I knew was that I, I got to go in and get her, right? So... I was, I was trying to tread lightly, but uh, in, in the back of my mind, I knew that if it couldn't take her way, it definitely won't take mine. It looked like he was at least in the shallow end. He knew he was about to get wet and cold. He got the dog, and then you can see him race into the house real quick, to get some dry clothes and get a little warmer. Sherman said that the lesson is pups are like kids. You got to keep your eye on them all the time, especially in conditions like the ones we had last week. And finally, talk about a family of different breeds. This is Ermel the Dachshund and her adopted friend, Beethoven the Boar. The Boar's mom died in an accident, so the Calden family took it in. Ermel took over feeding him since he was hypothermic and malnourished. So there you go. Now they're best friends. Neighbors helping neighbors. Yes. I like that. So. Yeah. Thank you, David. All right. We'll see you in a bit. Right now, 9 11, 58 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A local man is showing us his passion for art and music. Still ahead, what inspires him to make wooden guitar picks? A Houston businessman helping people in the community following the winter storm. How he's made an impact in that city. Still ahead. And good morning, I'm Max Massey. We know so many families in and around San Antonio are dealing with so many traumatic situations. The pandemic and the winter weather not making anything any easier. We also know Project Hope is here to help out. Volunteers up and about this morning. We're going to explain after the break. We know there are so many families dealing with so much right now, and there are organizations that have stepped up to help out those in need. The food bank has been vital to our community and continues to help out. Our Max Massey joins us live from the Episcopal tonight. Church of the mm. Holy Spirit. Good morning, Max. Well, there you go. Yeah, you got free time then, huh? Good morning, guys. Already so much activity out here. Take a look at these boxes behind me. Soon those boxes will be filled up with food and passed out. And take a look. All this food, all of these volunteers already out and about this morning. Look at this. This is really the community stepping up and helping out. We have everything from beans to rice to chicken egg noodles right here and join me all the way over here we have Scott one of the facilitators of this program so Scott what is the game plan for today so what we'll do is we'll like you see we'll unload the trucks or unload the boxes and then we'll fill up each box with about 80 pounds of food for our deserving seniors uh, the seniors will uh, drive up 
we'll check check them off of our list, load their car, and they're on their way. Usually, from start to finish, about five minutes when I'm talking, we talk to them. So fantastic. And what does this mean to you guys? I mean, just filling up the boxes, handing out the food to people who need it. Well, the one thing for us is is we're able to serve the community and serve our seniors. Um, the other thing is is what our church believes in is unity through service, and that's what we try to do every day. Now, you guys have been doing this for a few years now, but through the pandemic, through last week's winter storms, how much more motivation does that give you? Uh, you can see normally we don't have this many volunteers, and you can see that with the nice weather and, of course, uh, the thought of last week's hardship on everyone, they're here. Uh, to help us, and I, I really appreciate it. We, as a church, really appreciate it, too. How many boxes do you guys usually fill out? How many do you help out? Well, this month we're doing, uh, we have 65 seniors that we'll get boxes to. Typically, uh, it's on average of 80. Um, over the last course of the last year or so, uh, it's kind of drip, drifted down because of the pandemic. But other than that, we're we're here to serve, and we, we typically try to get everybody taken care of. Fantastic, Scott. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. And, guys, we are far from done coming up at 9.30. We are going to talk to a volunteer, explain why this is so important and so special. Back to you guys. Thank you, Max. Well, at least the weather is cooperating for people to volunteer. Bright sunshine, warm sunshine, Justin Horn. And, yeah, what a change from last week. We are certainly just soaking that up, aren't we? Uh, it's incredible. Yesterday was just incredible. We're going to have some pretty nice weather this week other than a few showers. Hours maybe showing up midweek. Let's go back one week uh, to. Uh, do we last have to? Monday. I know. I, I almost don't want to show this, but this was the scene that we were dealing with a week ago. Can you imagine that? That week was this week. Well live uh, in the history books. And sure. wasn't it last Monday when we got down to n nine? nine degrees? I uh, believe that. Well, it was. Yes, it was nine yes. degrees. That was the uh, record low. And speaking of which, there you go. So those were the, the freezing temperatures that we had last week. 13, 9, 12, 19, 26. And let me blow your mind here. Over the weekend was the anniversary of when we reached 100 in San Antonio. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we've <laughs> we had quite a week. Uh, the, the slow this morning was 48. We're already starting to warm up. We're in the, the mid 50s now. So, yes, it, it is much nicer. We did have some showers this morning, try to move through some cloud cover, kind of see it there in the distance, but it very quickly moved off to the south. We're at 57 degrees right now. Dew point is at 37. Northeasterly winds at about six miles per hour. You can see where that front was. We had a weak frontal battery move through, had a, a thin line of showers with it. We didn't really pick up any measurable rain. And it's not going to do a lot for our forecast today. In fact, we're still going to see some pretty beautiful weather. 52 Bernie Stage, 46 in Bandera, 59 New Braunfels, 48 Canyon Lake, 45 right now in Comfort, 55 Carrizo Springs, 54 in Rock Springs. And the dew points have come down a little bit. They're in the 30s today, so the air will be dry. Uh, just a beautiful February day. We should be up around 72 for a high here in town, 74 in Pleasanton, 77 in uh, Catula, and you'll find some 60s up in the hill country. And so to plan it out here, 64 noontime, 72 o'clock, and then 72 by the 4 o'clock hour with that light northeasterly breeze. Here's the forecast going forward. And by Wednesday, we'll start seeing an increase in cloud cover. So tomorrow's nice. Wednesday, it starts to cloud up again. We get another front coming through here. And by Thursday morning, should generate a few showers as it does. Behind this front, it is going to be cooler, I think, on Thursday. So Thursday is sort of a cloudy somewhat wet day we could see some showers scattered showers maybe even a couple of thunderstorms and the pattern remains pretty active because we'll get another front it looks like coming into friday and that may kick off some more showers and storms and even over the weekend the pattern remains unsettled not cold but unsettled and we could see uh, some more rain so it's uh, it's been active stays fairly active here 74 tomorrow, 74 Wednesday, mostly cloudy, and then a 40% chance of showers on Thursday. We lowered temperatures just a little bit, 59 the expected high, 65 on Friday, 30% chance of rain, and a 40% chance of rain on Saturday with a high of 70. So we should finish out February on a mild note, but it will probably go down as one of our coldest February's on record, guys. I would imagine, and I can handle that cold front from Wednesday to Thursday. It's not bad. That one's okay. It was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Still ahead on GMSA 9, from discarded wood to music magic, how one local man brought his love of woodworking to the music industry. 
From plastic to wood, one San Antonio man discovered his own sound of music by customizing guitar picks for himself. As Japanese Gray reports, he's since shared that passion of creating wooden picks from discarded wood with many in the music industry. It, it was a lot of therapy for me, you know, I, I, therapeutic to, to make things, to create and do different, different things. 46-year-old Will Oliver has always been passionate about woodworking. I usually follow the grain of the wood and I'll start something and I don't know what it is until it's done. For the past decade, he's been creating different works of art from different kinds of wood he finds. It's like somebody dancing. Like, <sighs> Rings, lamps, you name it, but his best creative discovery, making customized wooden magnetic guitar picks. Passionate about music as well, it was a creation he initially did for himself. Holding on to a small plastic pick and, you know, hearing the clanks and all that, it just, it didn't jive with me. So I wanted something a little bit more stout. From plastic, slappy sound to wood. Mixing his love of woodworking and music has impacted the guitar playing community. He's made thousands for different musicians. That's been really cool when people, you know, come back to me and say, I dig this. Helping others has a deeper meaning to Oliver. He himself needed help years ago as he battled opioid addiction. I had neck surgery. I had, uh, you know, I got hooked on pills. And, uh, you know, kind of went from there. But then at the same time, I had my own curiosities. I tried to quit many, many times. It takes a lot of uh, sitting in the tub, looking up at God and praying, <laughs> you know, just get me out of this. Rehab and his supportive friends and family got him out. I'm lucky to have come through that, I feel, because uh, many people don't. Will was lost to addiction, but he since found the gifted man he is today. That's picking a beautiful chord on What's Up South Texas. I hope everybody finds what God put them here for. I pray for that all the time. I don't know if I'm doing it. God, I hope so. If not, I'll find it. Jeffany Gray, KSAT 12 News. 926, 59 degrees. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. The world's largest snow maze just got a whole lot bigger. A look at the 240,000 square foot winter wonder still ahead. And the Spurs have had several players test positive for COVID. David and RJ give us an update coming up in our Spurs chat. And as we head to break, a quick check of the roads there. There's Loop 410 and Starcrest. No snow, no ice. 281 and divine, looking divine this morning. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 930. We are hoping to see the Spurs back on the court this week after many of the players have been in quarantine for days. David and RJ are back with us live to give us the latest on the silver and black. You guys carpool or because we're done with the winter weather, <laughs> you're able to come in separately? <laughs> Actually, yeah. separately That's today. That's go up to nice. David's house yeah. and yeah, yeah, just yeah. check on him and yeah. uh, make sure he thawed out. <laughs> it, was, it was. If if the Spurs picked a great time to be out of town, this was it, I guess. Because mm -hmm. yeah. and, and not play, probably it too. We were too busy taking care of everything else. We didn't have time to talk about the Spurs. Yeah, not sure. Uh, definitely not planned, but uh, yeah. the rodeo road trip kind of worked out for them since they were stuck in Charlotte for the past few days. Now, there are some players that are back based on what we've seen through social media. I think Trey Lyles, Lonnie Walker, they both posted on Instagram that they're back at the facility. But uh, they, this will be an interesting week. They've missed four games or postponed four games so far. Four games, and they need eight players. And they brought in Simonich, and they brought in Trey uh, Jones. Mm -hmm. So they got, they got enough guys to field the team. So we'll see if they play Wednesday <laughs> night. Now, you may not recognize some of them, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So it's Oklahoma I, City in OKC. So. Right, right. And the, the last time they played was actually on Valentine's Day. Uh, it was this game right here. They beat the Hornets. Uh, they improved to 16 and 11. And then the next day we got word that their game against Detroit had been postponed. And then that four players had tested positive and there was all sorts of contact tracing. So it has been a, an adventure for sure for the Spurs. But again, they were out of town. So they kind of avoided all the mess that was in town, which was good. <laughs> 
Are you guys ready for some rumors? Just oh, boy. Because we've got nothing else to talk about. Rumors. <laughs> you want to hear a good rumor? Can we say yes? Yeah. Sure. Okay, sure, say yes. Yeah. Sure, we'll say take yes. it. Okay, now let's qualify. This is a rumor mm. that, that, we, that we've been reading about. You know, this time of year, when, when the trade deadline starts coming mm -hmm. up, you start hearing all these good rumors about this guy going here and that guy going there. How about LaMarcus Aldridge to Boston for a couple of first-round draft picks and a couple of players, Grant Williams mm -hmm. and Marcus Smart. How about that? How about that for a rumor? That's a big deal. You like that one? If it's true. Ouch. If it's, well, yeah, it's, <laughs> but that's why they call them rumors. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and, of course, the Spurs might have to send a couple of players along with LaMarcus for that. And for there's that. the catch, right? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah. I think the rumor was Patty Mills and, mm. and um, uh -oh. yeah, Lonnie, Lonnie, Lonnie Walker, Walker, was, Lonnie Walker. Was, was the one yeah. in that one. Yeah. Of course, yeah. you know, you're going to start seeing all <laughs> kinds of stuff floating around out there. Yeah. over the next uh, couple of weeks to see. But, uh, you know, they've been without LaMarcus for several games. Mm -hmm. And the Spurs, I, last time I checked, they were still in sixth place, even though they lost all those, uh, haven't played all those games. Yeah. They, they've, they've Still won. in sixth place in the West. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do, the NBA does, to kind of make up a lot of these games. Because I think that teams that have gone through this, uh, the Spurs may have to play them multiple times. So Memphis yep. is a team that had to go through this earlier this year. San Antonio may get them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the Spurs have definitely kind of, uh, they hit sort of neutral here on the season, and uh, that was and if you guys <laughs> a lot going on here. We if if you guys remember, that's why they broke up the first half and the second half of the season, they, and we don't have a schedule for the second half of the season yet because of all these games that they figured they were going to end up having to postpone. So now the, the ones that they know will affect standings, they will try to figure out a way to get those yeah. into the schedule. If they, you know, if there may be some the East playing a West or West playing a mm -hmm. East that really may not affect the standings that much, they may they may forego those games. But that's why they delayed that uh, that second half of the schedule till after that break in yeah. March so they could kind of figure so let's out check what out, they do to make up these games. So let's check out what they have. They have Oklahoma City on Wednesday, and then they have New Orleans on Saturday. So, again, the Spurs just need eight players to play these games, and we're assuming that uh, with Trey Jones and Luka Samanich coming back from the Gubble, which is the bubble down there, the G League, they should be fine to go. They should be good to go, and maybe, maybe LaMarcus comes back. For these games, because Lamarcus wasn't with them yeah, on the road on the trip, trip so, so he's been in town dealing with everything else that uh, people have had to deal with. So it'll be an interesting we'll, week ahead uh, for the Spurs. We'll see. We're ready to pick this thing back up. Start talking about the Spurs instead of <laughs> ice and snow. <laughs> yeah. I prefer so, that. You like that? <laughs> yeah. R.J. David, thank you guys. All right, thanks guys. Outside with live cam, darn near 60 degrees. Looking. Beautiful out there. Yeah, despite our front coming through this morning, we've had a very, very quick warm up and we're closing in on 60, as Mark mentioned. You know, the pollen count has basically been on hiatus this week because we had the cold weather. Obviously, there's not going to be allergens around. It's trying to come back a little bit. We'll warn you that uh, mold is in the low category. It's at 330, but really, it's, it's good. Mountain Cedar is low, too. Mountain Cedar still showing up. It should be completely out of the pollen count here very soon. Uh, as we look at the temperatures, 48 in Comfort, 46 in Kerrville, 48 in Canyon Lake, 59 in New Braunfels, 57 in Randolph. And there is a little bit of cloud coverage to get down towards Catula and Bevo, but that is shifting out of the area. And we'll see sunny skies through much of today, up around 70 by 2 o'clock. 72, your high temperature, northeasterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys? Justin, let's look at the roads. There is, oh yeah, there's the situation we had earlier. I-10 and Calabria, you said upper, upper level? Yes, yes, we saw something going on out there. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yep, looks oh. like a vehicle hit the wall or something. I was involved in a fender bender, but uh, looks like we got a hero vehicle out there right now. A couple of pylons up as well. They're hoping to get this cleared up sooner than later. All right, so slow down in that area. Local organizations continue to step up to help people in our community. Our Max Massey joins us live from the Episcopal Church of the Holy Spirit. And Max, what is Project Hope? Yeah. All right, good morning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing program through the San Antonio Food Bank. Throw it, throw it on you down there in the woods. 60 pounds of food, but it is important to mention, you have to register for it and take Take a look behind me. The line is already forming. Again, if you missed that, 60 pounds of food given out to people who pre-register, and this is all through the San Antonio Food Bank. Take a look at what we've got going here. We have vegetables. We're looking at onions. The volunteers have been out and about early this morning getting all of this ready hard at work. We are joined here with one of the volunteers, John. I'm going to pick this up for you. Okay. There you go. Teamwork. 
All right, so John, why do you do it? Why do you volunteer? Uh, I volunteer. Uh, I, I've been actually been doing this since we started here, and it just really gives me uh, a warm feeling in my heart when I see all of these recipients drive up and we, they receive their food and the smiles on their faces, the thank yous. Uh, it, it's just an outreach and, and my gift back to God for what he's given me. Now, we know the last year has been so tough through the pandemic. And then last week alone with the winter weather, has that given you more motivation? Uh, yes, to make sure that I was here this morning. And, and we, of course, we didn't know until Thursday, I think it was, whether we really were going to have it, even though the weather was supposed to be clear today. But, yes, I, I was ready to get here. Fantastic. All right, John. Well, thank you so much for your time. And I'm going to take a look behind you. Guys, these are the boxes, roughly 60 pounds of food. This is all part of the San Antonio Food Bank. This is Project Hope. If you are interested, again, you have to pre-register. This happens once a month. If you have any questions on how to do so, what's involved, we have all that information inside the KSAT.com. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, Max. Glad to see all those people helping out. And did you notice one guy behind him was wearing shorts and a T-shirt? What's that like? <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, the, the weather certainly improved. Uh, 938, 60 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Many people all over Texas were left without power and water during the winter storm. Now some are coming home to damage from broken pipes. How a Houston businessman has stepped up to help out those in his community. Next. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. This item is already one of our most popular, a new one-year Sam's Club membership. This yearly membership is typically $45, but not today. It's only $28.88. And you get this for free, the Sam's Club Seasoned Rotisserie Chicken and the Eight Count Gourmet Cupcakes. Now, there are some important details and steps that you'll need to follow. After your KSAT Deals purchase, you'll get a confirmation email to redeem your purchase. Use the link to finalize your membership. Enter your information and activate your membership. Watch for your confirmation email, and once you've done this, you can pick up your membership card at the nearest Sam's Club. Now, be sure to read the email confirmation and sign up now to start saving lots of money. The KSAT Deals price on this $28.88. Head over to KSATDeals.com for this one and many more. And the good news this morning, Jam McInvale, better known as Mattress Mac, is once again helping a city in crisis. He opened up three North Houston furniture stores as a shelter for those left without power or heat during last week's record-breaking winter storms. And Mac did the same thing in the past, opening his stores for people who evacuated Hurricanes Katrina in 2005, Harvey in 2017, and Imelda in 2019. Mac has also partnered with vendors to bring in food to those sheltering at his stores, including 300 breakfast tacos donated by a local supermarket. Well, visitors to the world's largest snow maze in Manitoba, Canada, will find a little easier to get lost because this year's maze is about 91% bigger. Wow, visiting times are also being staggered to allow for more social distancing. The massive labyrinth took six weeks to build due to the unusually warm weather and expanded size. For people who have been quarantined in their homes, it's a chance to stretch their legs and take a little adventure. So that looks nice, but I'm kind of like tired of the yeah, snow. <laughs> it's like fact, <laughs> if we don't want to show any snow or ice video for like six weeks mm -hmm. we're cool I'm, I'm all right with that justin mm -hmm. we're probably good with it we'll wait till the summer then look back on it yeah, when it's sure like yeah, by then yeah. emotionally we'll be prepared <laughs> yes yes i agree <laughs> uh well a lot of people are walking out to the yards guys and seeing scenes like that behind me this is in my yard that is a sago and those are one of the hardest hit plants during this uh, hard freeze i'm told I covered this thing, but it still looks pretty pitiful. And uh, what I'm hearing, and I'm, I'm going to be doing an interview with a horticulturist tomorrow, but what I'm hearing is be patient. Some of these plants may look dead, but they'll still come back, uh, especially if the core, the crown of, uh, say, a sago palm is still intact. It's not squishy or it's, it's still kind of firm. You're okay. It, it will come back. It may look bad for a while, but uh, we'll get some of these plants back to life, hopefully, that being said, there were a lot that uh, were casualties of this storm uh, with temperatures as low as they were. I mean, we got down to nine degrees. That's going to unfortunately kill uh, quite a few plants. I want to show you the aquifer, too, because an interesting thing happened. When we got into this storm, the aquifer dropped off big time. Why is that? That's because saws had to use more aquifer water because the demand was as high as what you would expect during a, a brutal summer. 
Everyone needed water with the busted pipes, the electricity down. So that's one of the reasons the aquifer is weighed down. It's trying to rebound a little bit more now. Uh, the 10-day average is at 659. And I know it looks like we went down in stage one, but keep in mind, we were already in stage one. We never really came out, even though the number was above 660, uh, just because uh, we used the rolling 10-day average. But uh, it looks like, uh, again, we're now firmly in stage one in the aquifer. We'll see if it uh, gains a little bit more in the coming days. We do have some rain in the forecast. Outside right now, 57 degrees at the airport, 57 at Stinson, 57 actually across the board. Kelly and Randolph, too. We've got northeast Julie winds anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. They've been pretty light behind a frontal battery that moved through earlier this morning. Clearing skies here in town. There are some clouds down to the south. 63 in Castroville, 55 Bernie Stage, 59 at New Braunfels. 63 Kennedy, 59 Creuso Springs, and then you got some cooler numbers still in the 40s for Fredericksburg and Kerrville. Two points are lower behind the frontal battery. It's not going to do much for us other than maybe dry us out just a little bit. So the forecast calls for 70 by 2 o'clock, 72, 4 o'clock. Lots of sun today. Should be another gorgeous day. You can actually see where that front is right there. We got the tail end of it. A couple of showers didn't amount to much. We didn't get any measurable rainfall at the airport. But all the action is now moving well to our east and things will be quiet today and tomorrow. But then the pattern becomes a little bit more active. As we get into Wednesday, more clouds. Here comes our next front. This slides down on Thursday. I think it gives us a chance for scattered showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms. It will be cooler on Thursday, too. And then right behind that, we got another system that could bring some more rain Friday and even into the weekend. So there are some more rain chances ahead. Here's what the seven day forecast looks like. 72 today, 74 tomorrow, 74 on Wednesday. More clouds, then a 40% chance of scattered showers and storms. 59 on Thursday, it'll be quite a bit cooler. 65 Friday, 70 Saturday with a 40% chance of rain and still some lingering rain chances on Sunday. But one thing you'll notice there in that seven day forecast, no temperatures below freezing, not even close. <laughs> As we uh, even as we get into next weekend, we were joking earlier on the early edition, Justin, that it was nice to look at a seven day forecast without shivering, yes. shuddering or flinching. Uh, yes, that's that's true. I completely agree with that. We are OK with this one. Thank yeah. you, Justin. 947, 61 degrees. We'll be right back. In your entertainment news, the Go-Go's are the subject of a new documentary chronicling the groundbreaking band's career. CNN's Rick Damagella has more. We are the first all-girl band that wrote their own material and played their own instruments to be really successful. The history of the Go-Go's is explored in a new documentary appropriately titled The Go-Go's. There never would have been the Go-Go's without the punk rock scene in Los Angeles. That's something that might surprise those who are only familiar with the band's hits. I think even people that were fans of us from the time our first album was released might not know everything about our backstory. So you, it's a really great, weird story and people just cannot believe that we started out as a punk rock band and that we were part of the, the first bands, punk bands, to come out of Hollywood. I think the documentary has been amazing for the band, uh, not only for lifting us up and and kind of showing all of our story. You know, I, I think the salacious parts have been have overshadowed the accomplishments and most importantly the music. Showing our music, showing our story, how we did it all ourselves came from a very kind of just the way a rock and roll band is supposed to start out of the streets, out of the clubs. And we just were blessed and had the material and the catalog and the chemistry and the magic to go all the way.
2021 is shaping up to be a big year for the Go-Go's, who were recently nominated to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and will release a 20th anniversary edition of their God Bless the Go-Go's album in May. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Good morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, Jane Krakowski joins us. Plus, Cheska performing from Miami as part of our live virtual road trip. We'll see you soon right here. And just a reminder, University Health has rescheduled the KSAT Community Blood Drive due to the inclement weather. It was scheduled to start last week, but will instead take place on March 1st and 2nd from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the afternoon at the Woody Museum. University Health is encouraging everyone who can donate to do so. And during the rescheduled drive, so since blood supplies across South Texas are critically low, you can find out how to register on ksatcommunity.com. Transguide, real quick, we've still got a stall vehicle there, 10 and Calabra up against the wall. Looks like we're still waiting on a wrecker out there. Justin. And we're up to 61 now into the 70s this afternoon. Beautiful day, beautiful tomorrow. We will get some rain chances, though, towards the end of the week. Justin, if you had all the money in the world, would you spend $600,000 on art you could not hang on the wall nor put on a shelf? That's a hard pass. <laughs> Yeah, probably too. Yeah. <laughs> what if it was digital art of a Pop Tart cat? Mm. Uh, the picture's pretty cute, I'm though. <laughs> there you go. It's Aww. this. <laughs> it's this, yeah. In the 10 years since Chris Torres created Nyan Cat, an animated flying cat with a Pop Tart body leaving a rainbow trail, the meme has been viewed and shared hundreds of millions of times. And why not? Look how cute that is. On Thursday, <laughs> he put a one-of-a-kind version of it for sale on Foundation, a website for buying and selling digital goods. And it, in the final hour of the auction, there was a bidding war. Yeah. Nine Cat was sold to a user identified only by a cryptocurrency wallet number. The price? <laughs> Roughly $580,000. <laughs> Wow, that person really thought it was cute. The sale was a new high point in a fast-growing market for ownership rights to digital art and F ephemera, a media called NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Yeah, the buyers are usually not acquiring copyrights. They're not acquiring trademarks or even the sole ownership of whatever it is they purchase. They're buying the bragging rights and the knowledge that their copy is the authentic one. Well, that person Wait, paid a pretty penny for that. So you're not buying the copyright? You're buying the bragging rights. The, the brag, <laughs> not even the rights to a copy of this pop tart, flying pop tart cat with with rainbows coming out of the back end. Yeah. I don't. I guess you can stream uh, it on a TV on on your wall I, and call it art. I guess you could. <laughs> Have a high quality still copy printed out and frame that and hang that and say, look, look what I bought. Yeah, look, does this make you happy? I'm very confused. I <laughs> Just as like our pass. We are too. <laughs> we are too. If it made sense, we would have put it at the top of the newscast. That's true. <laughs> See you later, guys. <laughs>